This is module three, writing effective paragraphs and sentences. Writing effective paragraphs is something that's very, very important for your paper. Um, a lot of times we think about the paper as a whole and don't focus as much on the subdivisions or the smaller units such as paragraphs, but um, breaking it down and looking at paragraphs uh, individually is a great way to improve a paper that is uh, is struggling. And so um, just some things to think about in terms of writing effective paragraphs. The first one is that coherence is paramount within paragraphs. So what is coherence? Um, you might have heard before about the idea of unity in a paper. Unity is when all of the paragraphs in the paper match up with and, and logically follow the thesis statement. Coherence, uh, one way to think about coherence is its unity on the paragraph level, so that it means that every sentence in that paragraph matches and logically follows the idea of the topic sentence. Um, another idea with coherence too, coherence also encompasses flow. So the idea that your paper would be, or your paragraph would be flowing well, that each sentence would flow logically into the next is also part of coherence. Within the paragraph, for it to be effective, each sentence should contribute something to the argument either as evidence, which would be something like outside source material, like a quote or statistic, um, examples from, uh, and examples can encompass a great many different things. And also personal anecdotes, if you're giving information from your own life to back up your argument. A sentence should be either evidence, um, a sentence should be, fun or a sentence can function as a connection between pieces of evidence, or a sentence can function as a transition between sentences or between paragraphs. All these different jobs a sentence can do, but the point is that every sentence in the paragraph should contribute something to the argument. In other words, no dead weight. If there's a sentence in the paragraph that's not really doing anything, that sentence should be deleted because that sentence is dead weight for that paragraph. The more streamlined a paragraph can be, uh, the better. Though you should also still make sure that your paragraph is an effective length. Um, there is such a thing as a paragraph that's too short. Um, concision is great, but if the paragraph is, say, only three lines long on the page, then that's uh, that's a little bit short. Um, for an academic essay, it might be beneficial to connect that paragraph with another paragraph. Also, you can have the flip side situation, which is that a paragraph is too long. A good general guideline is that if a paragraph is longer than a page long in the essay, that paragraph is too long, and probably that paragraph should be broken up into some smaller paragraphs to help with flow. If we go even smaller from looking at individual paragraphs to looking at individual sentences, there are also some skills and some techniques you can try to write more effective sentences. Uh, one technique that's very beneficial is to vary your sentence patterns. Um, there's four different patterns for sentences, simple, comp complex, compound, and compound complex. Um, and these patterns reflect various combinations of uh, independent and dependent clauses. And um, that is a concept, the sentence pattern concept is one that you can find lots of information online. Um, it's also important to remember that sentence pattern does not necessarily have any bearing on length, so that you could have a fairly long, simple sentence and a very short compound sentence. So it's not necessarily to do uh, with length for each individual pattern, but varying the patterns and not using all the same pattern creates interest in your paper um, so that Every sentence in your paper shouldn't be a simple sentence. Most people intuitively realize that. What a lot of students don't realize is that it's also not good if every sentence in your paper is compound complex. That uh, monotony tends to grate on the reader. It's the best if you have a mix and a wide variation of types of sentence patterns that are creating interest in your paper because there's variation there in pace. Another technique for writing really effective sentences is to avoid wordiness and embrace, instead embrace concision. Concision simply means um, writing that is doing the job in a sufficient number of words, not an excess of words. So a, a really quick way to say this is never use 15 words when nine words will do the job. This is hard for lots of students because a lot of people have gotten used to purposely using more words than are needed as a way to meet a minimum word count requirement. And it can be difficult to turn that off and try to write for the sake of, of brevity or concision. But I really would urge you to do that because when you fill a paper with wordy phrases like due to the fact that 
which is a, a terrible one, or the reason is because. Um, if you fill a paper up with wordy phrases like that, the reader starts to drown in words and the whole thing gets very monotonous and it feels like the paper's just been overstuffed. Um, and many of those wordy phrases can be replaced by single words for much better effect. Um, so that due to the fact that can be replaced with simply the word because. And it's a very simple change that um, creates a much tighter sentence, which gives a much better effect. Another way to write effective sentences is to use active voice verbs most of the time. Um, a lot of students in high school are told never to use passive voice ever. Passive voice being something like, the floor was swept by mom. That's passive voice. Instead of saying mom swept the floor, which would be active voice. Um, passive voice is not grammatically incorrect. Uh, a lot of students are told not to use it and never told why. It's not a grammatically incorrect thing, but it lacks impact, which is why writing teachers tend to advise against it. When you use passive voice, you put the person doing the action in the sentence all the way at the end of the sentence or phrase, and so it blunts the impact. So use active voice verbs most of the time. Um, it's, it's okay to have a passive voice verb every now and then, but active voice verbs create a better tone, um, and also portray more confidence in the author persona. Another technique is to use punctuation carefully and judiciously. Don't overuse commas. Uh, contrary to popular belief, you don't need to put a comma every time you would pause if you were talking. There are actual rules for commas and um, learn those. Use them carefully and make sure you're using commas in the right place. Another important thing with punctuation is avoid too many exclamation points. Using too many exclamation points in an academic paper can make it start to sound um, unserious or excitable. Um, a guideline, a good guideline for that would be to try to avoid more than about an exclamation point per page in a paper, if you use them at all. Some people never use exclamation points and that's fine. Um, as you're preparing a paper for submission, you want to um, make sure your sentences are effective by carefully proofreading your sentences to eliminate sentence errors. These are fragments, comma places, and run-on sentences. All of these are problems, not just because they're incorrect um, or because they don't look good on the page, though they don't, but because they can inhibit the understanding of the reader. Fragments in particular can be very confusing for a reader because if there's no subject and verb, it's difficult to understand what the writer is trying to say.